Hi everyone, welcome back to my Lawn Bowls for Fun channel. Today I'm going to talk about marking a singles game, the basics of marking a singles game. If you've started bowling and you've started entering competitions and you've got mates that want you to mark for them and you want to know what to do, then watch this video. Okay, so you've been asked to mark in a singles game and you've never done it before. Bit of a scary prospect? Well, let me go through it with you. I'm going to go through the basics of how to mark a singles game. The first thing is that if you want to um, have a look at the, the World Bowls uh, Laws of Sport, then go to the link which is below here. But I'm just going to go through the basics uh, to get you started really. I'm not going to probably cover everything, but I'm just going to cover enough that will uh, enable you to mark a singles game with some sort of confidence. The first thing is that when you first start bowling, you, you, when you first start entering competitions, you'll realise that in a pairs and a triples and a rinks, because there's people each end of the green, you don't need a marker. But in a singles game, of course, you do, because you're both down the same end of the rink and you can't keep going up a place in a jack. It just isn't, it isn't doable. So you need someone to help you with the game, and that's uh, a marker. Some clubs have umpires, um, but a lot of clubs don't, and they will be happy to do that for you. But there are certainly enough experienced bowlers at every bowling club that will mark a game for you. And uh, normally, um, when, once you've played a few games, you'll get a rough idea what a marker does anyway, but I'm just going to go through it. So you've been asked to mark a game. Uh, the first thing you do is arrive there early to make sure the rink is set up. It's quite often that the actual players that are playing will do that for you, but I think it's always nice. I've always tried to get there early, a good half an hour before the game's due to start, to make sure the rink's all set out um, and, and you're ready to go. There's other things you're going to need, of course, to take with you. Um, you're going to need a coin to toss to see who starts. You're going to need a tape measure, um, some wedges, some chalk, whether it's a normal chalk or spray chalk, um, a scorecard, um, a pen, um, and a card holder as well was useful. So they're the basic things you're going to need in every single game. There's other items you might well need as well though, and you should have them nearby, and that's a set of calipers or long tape in case you need to measure from the mat as to where the jack is, so the 30 metre tape is needed. Obviously wet weather gear if you're going to be bowling outdoors, and in some games you'll see lollipops being used. I'm not going to really cover that in, in any detail because in the 37 years that I've been playing bowls and marking, I've never used them once and I've never seen them used at club level, even at district level. You will find if you go and watch a national competition um, sometimes, uh, in the finals anyway, you'll see lollipops being used. And if you go up to the nationals, to Leamington every year, you'll see them used in those singles games as well. But otherwise, frankly, you won't see them at club level, so I won't cover those today. That's for more experienced people anyway. The other thing to do is to make sure, obviously, um, if you've got a mobile phone on you, make sure you turn that off. You don't want to be disturbed. Um, uh, remove any keys or wallets or money from your pockets that don't need to be there. You've got enough things in your pockets already with, with uh, tape measure and various other bits. So make sure you, you, your pockets are fairly empty. You then obviously introduce yourself to the two players that are playing. You obviously probably know them, but it's still nice to introduce yourself if you don't, especially if you don't know them. Um, and tell the players that you will mark um, touches when they come to rest. Uh, it's easier if, if you do that rather than, I know some players like to sort of, if, if the other players on the mat ready to bowl are like to hold back, but it's if you tell them you're gonna mark the, the touches as soon as they come to rest, um, then, but at least they know what you're doing. Also, uh, tell them that you will remove uh, any dead bowls uh, from the ditch before the next person bowls. In trial ends, you indicate uh, how far away the bowl is from the jack, the length anyway. They can see the width, the, how far away the width is, but uh, 
for the depth you need to to indicate how far away clearly the, the, the bowl is from uh, the jack. If the bowl uh, is coming up and is going to disturb the jack, you should really let it do that because you can't stop the bowl. I sometimes see people stopping the bowl, disturbing the jack. But the whole point of the trial ends to see how far the bowl goes through with the weight that they've sent down the green. And if you stop it, you're not helping. It's easy enough to put the jack back or maybe lift it if you think you can get there in time. But so don't stop the bowl. See how far it goes through and indicate how far it went past the jack. And, and, and obviously before the game starts, you, you wish the players a good game. So that's before the game starts. Now we'll move on to the actual game itself. Now the single most important thing is you must remember that you're making sure that that game is being played uh, to the rules of bowls. Um, I've linked uh, the rules, as I've mentioned earlier, down below, so have a check of those anyway but you're there to make sure the game is played to the rules. So, for example, at the start of each end, make sure that the mat is centred on, on the centre line. And then also, when the jack is sent down, the jack is centred as well, and is more than 23 metres from the front of the mat. Interestingly enough, a lot of um, markers think that you only would check that if you've been asked by one of the players, but you don't. It's, you're, you're there to ensure the game is played to the to the correct rules of the game. So if you don't think the jack is up and, and the other, the opposition player hasn't queried it, you can still have it measured. And it's up to you to make sure that the game is played to the laws of the game. So don't worry about that. You don't have to be asked. You usually are, but if you're not, then you can question it yourself and have it measured with the 30 metre tape. Uh, obviously, if the jack uh, goes past the T mark, you place the jack on the T mark as usual. Now, when you're asked to give information um, from the other player down the other end, which is the whole point of you being there, is be as helpful as, as you can. Give the player that's asked a question information that you think would find useful. So if he says, for example, um, am I down? And, he, and he, he may think he's only one down. If he's three down, tell him that. Say, yes, you're, you're three down. It used to be many years ago, you could only answer directly the question being asked, am I dying down, yes or no? But now, if you think there's information there that he should know, you, you are allowed to tell him. If either player asks who's got shot, have a good look before you make your decision. You need to be 100% certain um, before you to decide which one is shot. And if it's a draw, if you're not sure, then just say it's a measure. You need to be 100% certain that you don't give incorrect information here. They can always, of course, come and uh, have a look at the head anyway if it's a crucial bowl. If a player fires, make sure you're well out the way and as the, the, bowl, as the bowl comes down the green, it's best to move forward so that you're not going to get hit by any bowls if he does disturb the head. Um, and the really most important thing is, is make sure you watch the head all the time for any touches because if that bowl clatters in a number of other bowls they all move if, if that bowl that's uh, on its turn hits the jack at any point before it stops it of course is a toucher so sometimes it's difficult to get out of the way and watch as well but you must try and do that mark any any chances that go in into the ditch before the next player uh, bowls remove any dead bowls as well from the ditch and also put out any markers in the ditch to indicate where bowls or the jack is so the players know um, wh what the situation is. Obviously re-spot uh, the jack if you're playing indoors and there are re-spot markers, make sure you re-spot the jack as well. When the end is over, make sure that the players agree uh, how many shots each have got. Of course, if there's any doubt about how many shots they have, um, they'll ask you to measure. To save time, you, you can indicate the number of shots if it's pretty obvious and there's going to be no, no dispute about how many shots rather than, rather than wait for them to say. I usually do wait, but uh, just to speed things up a bit, if it's pretty clear that it's three shots and, and they're wandering down, just you know, make sure they understand. Say yes, three shots, ask the question if they haven't already told you that but do wait for confirmation that they agree with what you've said. Try not, therefore, to delay the game in, in any way. 
Because all those singles games can be quick if one person dominates and gets ahead quickly, but sometimes they could be a very long game as well. One, if only one's got been short each end to different players, it can go on a long time. So try not to delay the game in any way. If you're using pushers at the end of the end, um, when the players are still walking up, I, I get the pusher and bring it up to, to the head. So at least, especially if it's a short jack and the, and the pusher's a long way back. So rather than delay things, I, I make sure the pusher is near the head uh, while they're walking up. Don't applaud uh, good shots. That could be difficult at times if it's a really, really good shot, but you're supposed to be totally neutral. So it's best not to, to applaud any good shots. It can be difficult to do sometimes. Only answer questions um, from the player that's on the mat uh, in possession of the rink. Uh, don't, once the ball stop, don't ask any questions from the player that's just bowled because they no longer have possession of the rink. Right, when it comes to measuring, um, you'll obviously measure if asked by either of the players. Um, if you're asked to use the 30 second rule, if you don't know what that is, it, when the last bowl stops, there are 30 seconds allowed for any bowl to fall over. That is even in any previous bowls that have been sent up. So once the last bowl comes to rest and you are requested to you can apply the 30 second rule where you just leave things alone. But once that 30 seconds is over, you can then um, wedge any bowls you like that you feel are likely to fall. Those are the ones that are involved in the measure, of course. Um, the, the two players should remove any bowls that are not uh, going to be measured just to clear them out of the way. Um, so you're just left with the bowls that you're going to be measuring instead of all the bowls being left around and getting in the way. If when you measure, um, it can happen sometimes, that it's a really, really close measure. If you're not sure which is shot, you can ask another person, especially if there's a qualified umpire nearby or at the club, then you can ask them to come and do a final measure. Or you can get another neutral player to do it as well. It happened to me a little while ago, I was playing in a game and it was a really, really tight measure and the marker couldn't determine which was shot. And it was a really important shot as well. So we got another person to come along and once they've uh, measured it, then we, we take whatever that decision is. So after the game, obviously congratulate uh, the winner and commiserate with the loser. Um, you complete the card and get both uh, players to sign. It's also a good habit to get into is uh, at the end of the game is to add the time. You should to put the start time and the finish time of the game. It's a good habit to get into. At um, club level, most clubs don't do that, but it is a good habit to get into. So there we are. That's the, the, the very basics of how to mark a game. Do you know, marking a game is, is really good fun. Once you know what you're doing, it can be very, very enjoyable. Um, in, a, in a normal season, I get asked to mark about half a dozen games at least. A good tip is always to go and watch uh, a, a few games of singles, not just to, to, to watch two players, but watch the marker as well. If it's, if it's an experienced marker, especially if you've got a qualified umpire, you just watch what they're doing. And if you follow what they're doing, you can't go wrong. So there we go. Fairly straightforward. Nothing to it, really. Uh, just follow what I've told you and um, go to the links that I've, I've provided for you earlier and you'll find it's actually a very enjoyable thing to do. So I hope you find that useful and uh, I'll see you again soon.